<laughs> On to the pay-per-view itself. How far did you get into it as we record today? Did you watch the whole thing or just the first half? Yeah, yeah watched to the end. Oh, you watched to the end? Okay, yeah. then, right. We well. fast forward and past, like, different parts and stuff, but... Uh... Yeah, we we got the gist of it. Yeah, I, uh, I I gave uh, some advice for a couple of matches to skip. But uh, I'm going to read some preamble here of the pay-per-view itself. WCW Halloween Havoc 1989, settling the score. October 28th, Civic Center in Philadelphia, PA. 7,300 in attendance and quite an impressive buy rate of 1.7, indicating around 150,000 buys. The debut for the new pay-per-view concept headlined by the Thunderdome. What is the Thunderdome? You'll find out in part two, because I didn't quite know what to expect of this, and quite frankly, after all the nonsense they were talking about an electrified cage, nobody expected like to them to all just forget about it, essentially. <laughs> now, <laughs> so, Elvira had been booked to produce some very good promos to advertise Halloween Havoc in the run-up to it. Uh, watching this, I know you watched it on the WWE Network. I hope you liked uh, library music overdubbing because there was quite a lot of it on this one. And then Jim Ross and Bob Cordell, well, I know, I'm sure you've got a lot of love for Bob Cordell, everyone does, thrown to Gordon Soley in the back, who's, I've got to say, uh, Gordon Soley's voice when he was doing interviews in the back, it seemed a bit weaker than I'm used to. Uh, is that just to my ear or was he uh, faltering vocally at this point? Yeah, he, he was starting to get a little bit older then, uh, you know, and, and I think... Uh, you know, it was showing. I mean, he was not a young guy at that time. And, uh, but you know, just one of those guys, you know, at least for me, having grown up watching him, you know, like to be in, in the same room or going to an interview with him or whatever, it was like really sort of cool. And, uh, I, I think more at the time as I'm looking back at it, it was like, okay, his voice is weak, but maybe he's got a cold or whatever. You're not, not thinking of it like now you, you see the spans of time, uh, because he was one of those guys that for us, us kids in the dressing room, was like one of the heavyweights. You know, he, he's like one of the guys. And uh, and just always, Gord was always just cool to be around. You know, all those all those announcers were, you know, they, they uh, Lance Russell, uh, Bob Cottle, all those guys, they, they, it wasn't like I see today where the announcers are off over here and they're given scripts or points to say or whatever. They would float around with the guys and shoot the shit with the guys, and you know, uh, you know, ask questions and different things. It, it was a lot more uh, uh, homogenous in, in the way that they uh, approached their job as announcers, and because of who they were, all of them, you know, it was just sort of like a little bit cold to us. You know, that we're we're actually standing and working with these guys. Uh, but they, uh, yeah, but he was by that end, he, you know, by that time frame, like nearing the end of his career, his voice was sort of winning, which is, I think, why they kept him off the play by play. You know, it was a lot more demanding and figured that putting him out there and that kind of thing, he still carried that gravitas. He, everybody still knew who he was. And now it's sort of just like, you know, giving him his, his platform in the, in the back, a little bit easier path for him. Uh, it's always an unfair question to ask that, but just, just play by play, forget the color. Forget teams, just as a play-by-play -play announcer, where does Gordon Soley rank on that list, the greatest? Certainly top three, five, maybe. Uh, you know, he he was for so many years. I knew, once WTBS, once cable television came in, early, mid-'80s, like in that 83, 4, 5, 6, in that like, range, uh, suddenly we're able to watch – the NWA program, Georgia Championship Wrestling programs. And you know, up to then, it was always just, he was the, a picture in a magazine for me. And suddenly, you hear him talking. And to this day, the, you know, the old timers in the dressing room talk about a vertical souffle. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a souffle, it was a souffle. I think it was, I think, something you eat. But uh, just the little witticisms and quips and things that he would have uh, that made Gordon solely Gordon solely. For me, it's, it's, you know, obviously, uh, I'm sure somebody like Chris would probably say Jim Ross, right? Because when, when he was of age and, could be, you, know, be, you know, coming into wrestling as a fan, for me, it was uh, Bill Cardell in Pittsburgh and then, you know, Gordon Soley later. Uh, and, and certainly Jim Ross played in there. Uh, my top play-by-play -play guy ever, probably done with a lot of other people's, uh, Joey Styles. I, I thought Joey was extraordinary at it because he did it without a play-by-play -play guy, I mean, without a color guy. And 
did it much, and I don't think he even knew what he, that he was doing it that way, but was doing it much the way that Bob Coddle and Lance Russell and Gordon Soley and those guys would, because he would come in and talk. I remember he and Taz talking about uh, uh, the, ta the Taz mission, the, 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 uh, and, and they came up with the name Kadahaja Maid. And, uh, you know, so like Joey was very reminiscent to me as the star in that company of these luminaries of previous generations. Uh, and, 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 you know, and, and again, because of what it was, uh, the presentation of ECW so different at that time to what fans had seen from wrestling prior, it, this was a completely different painting. This had not been seen. And so that Joey was so adept at that. And, and I, again, I don't know if he was knowingly uh, invoking the, the Solis and, and the Coddles and the Russells and all of those guys. But he, he very much felt like that in the way that he approached it, to me anyway.